Today, we're going to be reviewing the 3030 Prover Max CNC from SaneSmart. We'll take a look at all of the new features this machine has to offer, and we'll see how it performs by doing some stress tests and pushing it to its absolute limits while machining. When this machine showed up at my door, I immediately noticed how heavy it was. Assembling the machine was quick and straightforward thanks to these great instruction manuals that SaneSmart includes with all of their machines. The website for the CNC claims that the assembly time is 10 minutes, but realistically, it took me about 15 or 20. I like that they made these side pieces out of solid aluminum with tapped holes to bolt into. This makes the assembly much simpler than other CNCs. You no longer have to use sliders and aluminum extrusion and measure to figure out where the x-axis is supposed to be mounted. You just slide the x-axis into its slot and screw it in. Speaking of the construction, I love that almost everything on this machine is made of metal. This greatly increases the rigidity of the frame and will play a big part in how accurate this machine is under high loads. For motion control, SaneSmart used linear rails and ball screws instead of linear rods and lead screws on all three axes. The linear rails increase the machine's rigidity and the ball screws will increase its accuracy. I think these factors in the machine's construction play the biggest part in how well this machine performs in our tests later on in the video. Another notable improvement is the design of these cover plates that protect the motion control elements from dust and chips. Most of the other machines have exposed lead screws and linear rods, which can get gummed up with sawdust and chips. This 3030 CNC has covers for some of the ball screws and linear rails, and others are flipped in an orientation that makes them less prone to having chips land on them. An ease of use feature that was introduced on the 3030 is this front mounted screen. We went from a cheap offline controller that was added as an afterthought to a more user-friendly controller. While I enjoy the familiar 3D printer-like interface, the software could use some work. Before doing a carving, the jogging worked like normal. You hold down the button for as long as you want the CNC to move, and then when you release the button, the CNC stops. However, something changed after I completed a carving. I held down the button like normal, but when I released it, the CNC kept speeding off in the same direction. The e-stop button was very useful here. To fix the jogging, I couldn't just reset the machine. I had to unplug it completely and plug it back in. While this was a pain, I also feel like there should be a pretty simple software or firmware fix that SaneSmart could implement. Therefore, I'll provide an update down in the description letting you know if they release an update for people who already bought the 3030, or if they fix this for machines that will be sold going forward. Of course, before we start carving, I can't forget to mention that this machine also comes with the same powerful 300 watt spindle and an enclosed power supply. Good job on that one, SaneSmart. A larger spindle mount is also included in case you want to mount a router instead of the included spindle. The cable management on this machine is also great. Half of the wires that are usually visible for the limit switches or motors just seem to disappear. SaneSmart really outdid themselves this time. Now enough looking at this thing, let's get carving. For our first experiment, we will test their claim of 0.05mm accuracy. We are going to try carving this simple square shape into a piece of wood. We're expecting it to be 40 millimeters in both the X and Y directions. Let's see how this machine does. Measuring the actual cut with calipers, we see that the cut was indeed within a 0.05 mm tolerance of 40 mm. Their claim of a 0.05 mm accuracy is not only true, but very easily achievable with realistic cut settings and materials. Just make sure to enter your end mill dimensions correctly. Don't round 6 mm to a quarter inch like I did, or your cuts won't be accurate at all. For our next test, we're going to see how deep of a single pass cut we can do before we see problems. I set up a machining operation where each of these five cuts get progressively deeper and therefore more aggressive. The test starts at a tenth of an inch depth of pass and goes all the way into making a half inch pocket in one pass. I did have to slow down the feed rate for the last cut as the chatter of the bit was getting a little scary. However, the machine didn't have any problems all the way up until the half inch cut. I was curious if the accuracy would be maintained even with such an aggressive cut, so I measured it. 
I was pleasantly surprised that all of the cuts landed within that previously mentioned 0.05 millimeter tolerance, even when cutting at a feed rate as aggressive as half an inch per pass. Very impressive. Scrolling down further on their website, SaneSmart claims that this machine can do a 2 millimeter depth single pass cut in aluminum. At least that's how I interpreted this graphic, otherwise any machine could do a 2 millimeter cut given an unlimited amount of passes. I've never done such an aggressive cut in aluminum before, so I was skeptical of this 2 millimeter single pass claim. But let's give it a try. Unfortunately, when I was doing a 2 millimeter cut, the bit started to chatter like crazy and I had to hit stop because I thought my end mill was surely going to break. I reduced the depth to 1 millimeter and tried again. This is definitely not the type of cut I'd want to make on a project because the dimensional accuracy was not great due to the chatter. However, I don't think I can 100% blame the machine for this. My end mill is sticking out of the collet much much more than is recommended for this type of aggressive cut. I could either buy a different end mill, or I can just machine this with a much shallower depth of cut. Let's try the latter and see how accurately this thing can cut aluminum and how clean the cut comes out. For this cut, I used a feed rate of 120 millimeters per minute at a 0.1 millimeter depth per pass. The surface finish and edges you see are straight off the machine with no post-processing. Just ignore that defect on the left side, it's from the first tests. This cut was supposed to make a 6mm pocket. Because there was less chatter this time, we're pretty close to that claimed 0.05mm tolerance. Of course because this machine can engrave wood and metal, it will be plenty capable of machining plastics and other softer materials as well. All in all, I have to say that I'm impressed with this machine. These are the most difficult tests I've put a desktop CNC through so far, and it's performed pretty well. The decrease in the amount of end mill chatter between this machine and cheaper ones is definitely noticeable. Unfortunately, it does come at a higher cost of $850. However, it's the highest quality and most capable desktop CNC I've reviewed so far. So if you're looking for something really cheap and don't need the high power and precision, a less expensive machine might be the right option. However, if you're looking for the best performance available at this size, or if you're looking to upgrade your current machine, this is probably the right option for you. Just remember to check the description for any updates about the software slash firmware situation. Also, I just launched a channel membership program where you can get perks such as members only content and early access to my new videos. You can sign up with the top link in the description. With that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.